Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a video tutorial about Bifrost and this time we're going to be covering how to make waves. Bifrost is a dynamic simulation and it's capable of doing amazing things but what we're going to be doing today is fluids. So I'm going to create a little bit of a wave animation. Just an introduction to Bifrost. So the first thing you'll see here is this container and you can see that it's called Container Geo and if I isolate it by clicking on this button right here uh, you can see that it is just a container that's going to hold our fluids. We also have something another piece of geometry called the Emitter Geo the emitter geo is just a regular cube that I, you know, modeled. This is going to be the shape of the fluid and how it's going to start. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go to the top left and go to effects, and this will bring up a bifrost. By selecting the emitter geo, you're going to go to bifrost and then change this to liquid. Now, a couple of things happened. You're going to see this box, and this box has a bunch of little particles in it. And if I press the number four in your keyboard, you're going to see that these particles are in fact being emitted by the emitter geo. So it's a shape of this piece of geometry. If you take a look at your outliner, you're going to see that there's a bifrost liquid. This is in fact the liquid itself, which is just particles at this time. We also have a bunch of properties that we can play with plus a mesh. Let's go ahead and grab the bifrost liquid and open up the attributes. And you can see that we have a couple of things that we can play with. And one of them is the liquid shape. This liquid shape has point size. If you feel like the points are too small, you can go ahead and change the point size to something like two, and we'll be able to see the effect. I'm gonna click on rewind. If I hit play, you're gonna see that the particles are actually gonna fall through the container because I have to tell this liquid, I want it to intersect with this container. So I'm gonna select the liquid, I'm gonna shift select the container, and we're gonna to go to Bifrost and say Collider. Now if I rewind and press play, you're going to see that the particles actually stay where they're located, which is great. Now you'll also notice that there's already a little bit of motion in the particles because uh, they are still influenced, there's gravity, there's a bunch of influence going on, so there is some sort of animation happening right now. Now I'm going to reduce my, my amount of time here to 250, and this little blue line means that it's caching. And let's go ahead and click on the number 5 again so we can see our geometry. Now the emitter has done its job. Don't delete it, but I'm just going to hide it by clicking on control H so I can see the particles themselves. And I'm going to rewind so that it starts at the beginning. Okay, so now that we have the basic particle system, the next thing we want to do is give it some sort of force so that the wave starts crashing into the shoreline. So to do that, we are going to need a piece of geometry. So I'm just going to create a basic cube and I'm just going to elongate it here. And I'm going to place it probably somewhere here. And I'm going to delete all the history and all that stuff. And this is going to be my force. So if you know anything about waves and dynamics, you need some sort of force for the particles to move. So I'm going to select the liquid again, then select the force geo. And I'm going to go to Bifrost Collider. And with that, I'm going to animate this force geo because I wanted to move forward and give the wave some dynamics. So let's say that I'm going to start around frame 20. I'm going to hit S on the keyboard. Then I'm going to move forward to about 40, fr 40 frames and just kind of nudge this forward. And the more force it has, the more water it will splash. So just keep that in mind. So this is going to be in frame 40. I'm going to rewind and then hit play. Now before I forget, it's really important to make sure that your playback speed is playing every frame free. And the reason why is because it can't, it can't calculate. You see how I'm skipping frames? If it tries to play real time, it might skip frames and therefore the dynamics can't be simulated. So it's very important that you guys go to play. Uh, the playback speed is in fact in play every frame. All right, so now that I have that, I'm gonna rewind, press play, and let's see what that looks like. So you can see that the water is splashing, you can see the wave, you can see that the particles didn't fly out of everything and that it's crashing into the shore, which is great. Now, if I want to give it a little bit more force, I am going to rewind and maybe push this a little bit more forward. And if you want more force, 
just bring the animation closer together and let's see what that looks like. I'm going to rewind, press play. Now you can see that some of these particles have in fact flown out now, so we have to be very cautious with that, but you're starting to see that the water is starting to splash through. I'm going to go ahead and stop. And unfortunately, these particles will go on forever, so we do have to have some, some sort of mesh that will kill the particles if they leave a certain surface. And this is going to be called my kill plane. I'm going to select my liquid, and I'm going to go to Bifrost Kill Plane. And what that means is that if these particles hit this object, then they will disappear and not go on forever. And this will actually help us a lot when it comes to our dynamics because we don't want particles to be calculated that are not going to, you know, make do anything for us. So let's see what happens now. I'm going to rewind, press play. Here comes the force. You can see that the particles are starting to fly out. Rotate the camera and you'll see that once they hit the plane, they stop, right? So the calculation remains here, which is, which is very valuable. Now, if you wanted to create another kill plane around the box, you could, you're more than welcome to, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how uh, to use kill planes. Okay, now that we have this, how do we render it so that it looks a little bit more like water? Some of you may have noticed that when this animation started, there's a little bit of a white area around the particles. That is not foam. That's just showing you force of that what's going on with the particles. So that's actually, it may look like foam, but it's not. It's just showing you that these particles are being impacted. All right, so how do we make this look like water? The best way to do it is that we can actually go to the shape, scroll down, and you'll see Bifrost meshing and turn that on. And this is going to give you a bunch of mesh. If I rewind and play, you're going to see that this mesh, in fact, moves around. Now, you're also going to notice that it's pretty low poly and it's not great. But let's see what this looks like right now. I'm going to stop it and I'm going to bring in a light. So Arnold Lights Physical Sky. And let's see what that looks like with a render. So you can see that it's looking like liquid. It's got this uh, Arnold shader and it is splashing in. But if you want this to be more accurate or have a little bit more information in it, you're going to have to need more particles. So let's go back into the liquid and I'm going to turn off enable. And we need to add more information to our liquid. So in the Bifrost properties container, you're going to see that we have something called a master voxel size. And, and let me rewind here. And the master voxel size means that it's going to be the how many voxels, which is almost like pixels, how many voxels do you want per unit? And right now it's at 0.5. Um, if you want more than that, which I encourage that you do, uh, you might want to decrease this to like a 0.2. Now the issue is, is that the more voxels you have, the more particles you have, the longer the simulation, the longer everything's going to take, the harder the calculation. So you need to keep that in mind when you are creating these things that yes, you can have more voxels, which is what you need. But at the same time, keep in mind that these voxels will cause your computer to slow down. So if you do not have a killer machine, be careful with dynamics. These things eat up so much RAM and so much space. All right, so I have this. Um, I feel like my point size are getting a little big, a little crowded there. So I'm going to change it to one, which is the default. So we get a lot more voxels, a lot more information, a lot more particles. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to rewind and then press play. Now give it some time. It's going to slow down the calculation. It is calculating way more pixels or way more particles. But again, we're trying to get a little bit more accurate mesh. All right, I'm going to press stop. And you can see that the smoothness of the particles is significantly better. I'm going to keep letting it play a little longer. Maybe when it splashes up, it'd be cool to watch. There it goes. Some of the particles are going to take off there. Cool, like a wave. And I'll just press stop right here. All right, let's see what that looks like when I turn on Enable Bifrost Meshing. 
So you'll notice that there is significantly more mesh. We're getting a lot more information in here. And let's see what it looks like with a render. So you can see that we're getting some really nice results. We have uh, a little splash right here. You have layering of water. And of course, it really helps with the visuals. Uh, some people actually like to assign a Lambert to it. So if you want to, you can assign an existing Lambert to it. We can rewind, turn off the wireframe, and and I'm going to do a play blast and see what that looks like. So I be I will be right back. And here it is. Sometimes with the Lambert, you can see a little bit more. So you'll notice that even though we have a lot of voxels, the noise is still, you know, the voxel information can definitely be a lot more. So with that being said, uh, let me go ahead and do that and show you guys what that's going to look like. So again, I'm going to go back into my liquids. I am going to go to my voxel and change this to 0.15. Uh, oops, that seems high. 0.12. So if I take a look at, let me go back into the liquid and turn this off and rewind and do a shift H to reveal it, you're going to see a lot more voxels, like a lot, which is great. Um, then what I'm going to do is enable this and I'm going to hide the, vo the liquid again so I can run this and see what the play blast looks like. So now you can see that the mesh is pretty, pretty heavy. All right. That being said, once again, I am going to pause the video so you guys don't have to watch this happen and we will take a look at this play blast once it's done. And here are the results. So you can see that the quality of the water is significantly higher. Look at those beautiful waves. And you can see that there's a lot of really great dynamics going on. So hopefully you found this helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. And um, I hope this introduces you to Bifrost so that you will feel comfortable in creating beautiful water simulations. If you found these video tutorials helpful, please like and subscribe. And of course, share these videos to somebody that may want to learn a little bit more about Bifrost. Those type of actions really encourages me to create more and it helps me continue with my mission, which is providing free, high quality video tutorials for you. So please help me out by liking, subscribing and sharing. If you guys want to download this 3D model, please go to academicphoenixplus.com where you can find the model for free, as well as other free 3D models, trainings, eBooks, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you next time.